when we talk about relaxers, we have two types of relaxer. We have a lie relaxer and we have no lie. But both relaxer uses the same hydroxide combination. So they are both alkaline. Now we talk about alkalinity, we have to talk about acidity. And that comes to play when we look at the pH scale. Now on the pH scale, because relaxers are alkaline, it is going to be anywhere from 10 all the way up to 14 on the pH scale. Now keep that in mind as we go further in the discussion. On the pH scale, our skin and our hair is at 4.5 to 5.5. So can you see the imbalance there? 4.5 and 14 or 10 to 14. So there's pretty much not a balance when it comes to alkaline and acidity. So since we are talking about the effect that relaxers have on our hair, we are going to be looking more towards the alkaline side of the pH scale. Now any product, and I mean any chemical product that we use on our hair, whether it's permanent hair color or hair relaxers, they all work in the same manner. But since we are talking about hair relaxers, let's zoom in. If you're new to the channel, I'm Mika. And if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give the video a like. On this channel, it's all about healthy hair care. So if that's something that you're interested in, then don't be afraid. Go ahead and subscribe. Once the relaxer is applied to the hair shaft, it softens and swells the hair shaft, forcing the cuticle imbrications to open. And that is how the relaxer enters into the inner layer. Now here has three layers. That is the cuticle, which is the outer layer, which is also transparent. And then we have the inner layer, which is the cortex. And we, then we have the innermost layer, which is the medulla. But any chemical changes that is going to take place is going to take place where? Which one of those layers do you think that the chemical changes will take place. Take a guess. If you guess cortex, you are right. Hair is made up of 95% protein and this protein is called keratin. Now the keratin is made up of several amino acids. These amino acids are connected by what we call a peptide bond, which several of these creates what we would call a poly peptide chain. Now, two polypeptide chain would be connected by the side bonds and these side bonds are hydrogen bond, salt bond, and the disulfide bond. Now the disulfide bond is the only bond that can be broken by chemical means, which would mean that once the relaxer gets into the cortex, then its main aim is to break the disulfide bond. A disulfide bond is made up of two sulfur atoms. These sulfur atoms are connected to the amino acids. So several different amino acids and they are connected by a sulfur atom. And then these sulfur atoms, when come together, they would form what we call a disulfide bond. So two sulfur atoms would give us a disulfide bond. But once the relaxer get inside of the hair shaft, its job really is to make the hair straight how is it going to make the hair straight? Is by breaking the disulfide bonds. For it to break the disulfide bond, what is called lanthionization has to take place. So during the lanthionization process, there's a change in pH. Remember earlier we said that the pH of the hair and skin, which we are working with the scalp, would be 4.5 to 5.5 and where on the pH scale would we find that? Take a guess. Yes, on the acidic side of the pH. Now that we have had it relaxer to the hair, which is alkaline, we have taken the hair from 4.5 to 5.5 all the way up to perhaps a 10, 11 or a 12, depending on the strength relaxer that you're using. 
This sudden change in pH in the hair shaft causes an earthquake-like shaking in the hair shaft. And when I said earthquake, I mean earthquake shaking. Where this now causes the, some of the sulfur atoms now to fall off the amino acids. Remember that two sulfur atoms combined gives you disulfide bond right so now the bonds are broken so now you no longer have a disulfide bond because one of the sulfur atom has fallen off in this earthquake like process and so now you're left with just one sulfur atom so this lanthanized process that the hair went through creates a new bond that is called a lanthionine bond so now we have a new bond so instead of having a disulfide bond we have what is called a lanthionine bond however the good thing about this is that even though the hair is relaxed and in a straight form not all the disulfide bonds would have been broken because if all the disulfide bonds are broken then basically you have no hair and all the hair would fall off but because we only break some of it then we would leave the hair in a much stronger state and that is why when we leave our hair or leave some curl in the hair some curl pattern in the hair we're actually leaving back some of the disulfide bonds so the straighter you want the hair to be is the more disulfide bonds you're breaking and the more disulfide bonds you break is the weaker your hair will get and that is when you're going to see extreme breakage so if you do not want to see breakage when you relax your hair leave some amount of curl or texture in the hair this will ensure that some amount of strength is retained in the hair now that the disulfide bond is broken this change is permanent it cannot be reversed so now the hair would be in a permanent straight formation so that is what occurs inside the cortical or the cortex layer of the hair shaft so once that change has taken place, it would be time to bring back the hair from such a high alkalinity back to its normal pH, which is 4.5 to 5.5. So that process of lanthanization can stop taking place. And so we want now to get the hair back to its normal pH. So what we would do now is to go in with a normalizing shampoo or a neutralizing shampoo which would help to re-harden the hair shaft and also to bring back down the pH level of the hair to its normal pH which is you guess 4.5 to 5.5 so that is exactly what happens to the hair when we apply relaxer onto our hair shaft if you found value in the video don't forget to give the video a like and if you have not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.